Hello, Charlie Gladstone here. How are you? I hope you're well. This is a video for some good ideas about radical transformation. Radical transformation for you and for your business. And why I think that the lockdown of the summer of 2020 and the subsequent months are not only going to allow you to radically change, but I think are going to really, truly require you to radically change. This video is going to be split into two sections. I will introduce my ideas and tell you why I think they're both necessary and desirable. And then I'll move on to seven simple ways that I can help you, I think, to navigate that change. Before I start, I should just say that this is not going to be something of technical wizardry, this video, although I can do that. Look at that. It's filmed at home on my phone. And so please don't think that it's the News at 10 or a Sky TV production. However, I do hope that there are some interesting lessons here for you. In a weird way, I think that people are going to be looking for this radical transformation in your life. Well, what do I mean by people? Well, I mean your customers and your clients and, and also perhaps your boss. I mean, if you think about this just in very simple terms, if you've gone to your boss, let's say, six months ago and you said, I want to work at home for three days a week or I, I want to only work for four days a week or I want to move to the country and only come and see you occasionally. I think they'd have probably said, we, we don't do that. Sorry. Now, I think they might just they might just say, well, actually, we've been thinking about that and we think that's a good idea and let's do something. So I think that people are receptive to change and I think that people are expecting to change. So Try change, the sort of change I've spoken about in previous videos, uh, the sort of change that suggests that inertia is slow death. But try it now. Don't do things in a half-hearted way at the moment, because I think if you don't change, the world will change around you after this and you will be quite literally stuffed. So this is about radical transformation. Right. I just want to talk very briefly about uh, the idea of Tiananmen Square and the change in the protests this summer there. Now, for 31 years or for 30 years since 1989, the protest has followed very much the same form every year. And this summer, for reasons uh, attributed to coronavirus, the Chinese authorities have said that the protest can't happen. Now, Rather than simply thinking, oh dear, we can't do the process this year, let's have a year off, what the people who organise them have an opportunity to do is to say, how can we completely refresh this? How can we make this something new? Let's think about this in a new way. And I suspect they'll come up with something that will become a global phenomenon as people are able to engage with it and their anti-establishment protest moves into the 21st century. So that's the kind of thing I'm thinking about. First lesson is very simple. Now is the time. Don't delay. Not next month. Not next year. Act now. This is your opportunity. It's right in front of you. It really is. The second lesson is that I'm seeing this as the equivalent of a factory reset. That's the moment when you press the button on your phone and everything disappears and you think, yikes, it's all gone. But of course, in reality, it hasn't gone because when the phone wakes up again, you've got the same remarkable bit of kit, this extraordinary phone, this hardware, and outside the phone, up there in the ether or wherever it exists, you've got all of this amazing software, this beautiful, extraordinary software. So if you think of yourself as the hardware, albeit maybe a bit scuffed like me, or the uh, and your opportunity as the software, then you have a good view as to why you should press the factory reset button on your life. This is the opportunity to totally refresh. You will have the same fantastic hardware, you, you'll have the same beautiful software, all of the opportunity that exists in the world, whatever that should be. So think of this as a complete factory reset. Lesson three, fear. Now, a lot of us are very frightened of change and I fully recognise, although I'm someone that loves change, that that is completely valid. But don't be frightened. If this change that I'm talking about, this radical transformation doesn't work, you can, I promise you, go back to how things were. 
Having said that, I think if you do this properly, then everything's going to be all right. It's the half-heartedness that I've talked about earlier that I think will be the problem for you. So ask yourself, what is the worst that can happen? There isn't a great deal. And then move ahead and doing things really, really robustly. Fourth, I would like to talk a little bit, and I'd like you to think a little bit about how you define success. Now, success is generally defined as a financial thing, isn't it? I mean, you know, he is really successful. He's got this and he's got that and he's done this and he's done that. And, and actually, I think we need to redefine our notion of success as individuals. Whether we'll do that as a society, I very much doubt, because I think that our government will continue with the rapacious consumption and, and the following of capitalism that they've advocated before, and that's fine. But we can think in a slightly different way. I've read all sorts of studies about this, and I, and I believe that if you have about £8 million, then you are likely to report yourself as being a bit happier. But for the rest of us, provided that we don't live in poverty, we are generally happy, not to do with the amount of money we have, but to do with other circumstances. Now, I, I think a lot about death, and, and I think this has happened to me since my dad died a couple of years ago. And I think about how we will be thought of when we are wheeled down the aisle. And I don't think that anyone's gonna say about me, he was really successful, he had two really fast cars, or this was his bank account or whatever. I think what they're gonna talk about is, is, is legacy. And that legacy, that rich legacy, I think can only be something that you can contribute if you are fundamentally happy. So redefine your success. Maybe even think about writing down a number of things that you define as your personal success. When I started Peddlers, I mean, I don't know, 25 years ago or so, and it became quite a big company, I thought for a time that that would make me really rich. And, and I pursued that, I genuinely did. But after a while, I realised that that just wasn't going to happen. And I started to think, why, why was Peddlers something successful? How could we redefine that? And I decided that my notion of success was going to be around ideas of looking after my team and entertaining my team and sending them off into the world to do other jobs and they'd finish with me as better and happier people and enlightening the lives of my customers and making their lives more fun and richer. So I redefined my notion of success as about people and not money. I understand that we need to make money. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about redefining our notions of success away from just being money. Lesson five, be really creative with your ideas. Don't be shy. Let your ideas flow. I mean, I think, I think a lot of us are really quite scared about expressing ideas in case people mock them. But people won't mock good ideas. People want good ideas. Coming out of this, people want to be, will want you to be creative. So share your wildest ideas. Allow them to bubble to the surface. If you want to go and live in a hut in Alaska, why not, why not do that? Why not think about that? If you've had this extraordinary idea for how to connect with your clients, why not do it? You know, allow this creativity to flow. Now is the time. Customers and the rest of the world are gonna be looking for creative ideas and you have a chance, you really do, to let those ideas connect with people. So encourage that. Now, item six is you need to share those ideas with someone. And I think you need a life or a business mentor. And I hope you have one. And if you don't, get one. How do you get one? Well, you just have to do what the Americans would call reaching out. You've got to reach out to people. You've got to ask them. I get a lot of people asking me to mentor them. And the interesting thing is that I actually very rarely say no to people who I think I can help. I mean, I, I don't pretend that I can help them in a huge way, but I think that through a phone call or a couple of meetings, I probably can help them. So, don't forget when you're asking people to mentor that it might be interesting and illuminating to them as well as to you. So it's a two way thing. So ask people, get a mentor, share those ideas. Don't be shy. Embrace wild ideas. Finally, for this item seven, be bold. Act now. Do it. Please do it because there won't, I promise you, be a better chance. 
When this is all over and the dust settles down, whenever that is, we will go back to being entrenched and conservative. And now we have an opportunity to reinvent our lives and that of our customers. So that's it. I've run just over 10 minutes. This is, of course, short. If you want to discuss this with me in any more detail, do email me. You can find my email address on charliegladstone.com or you can message me at Chaz Gladstone on Instagram or whatever. Um, I'd love to talk further. Thank you very much for joining me. Make the change. Be radical. See you soon. Bye. Thank you.